Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Here it is, the DJI Mini 2. As you can see, they left out the Mavic. They called this one the Mavic Mini, and this was the Mavic Air 2 that also just came out. Interesting, huh, how they left out the Mavic in there? Anyway, got the Flymore combo here. So this is going to be the first in the full in-depth series. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to see everything from this unboxing, full in-depth flight testing. You're going to really see how it's improved. Uh, in this video, we'll be comparing it to the two just for a size comparison. It is still 240 grams so they are still matching the weight of the original which is awesome with some upgrades we'll talk about those to come also going to do a range test because this has the new OcuSync right better transmission technology than the original Mavic Mini and also has a 4k camera so they really have upgraded this thing this is going to be a great series I'm going to go full in depth also going to do some cinematic video with this one anyway enough talking about it let's start this review of the DJI Mini 2 Let's get into it. I've not even taken off the plastic wrap yet. This just came in the mail, I think it was a couple days ago. Finally have some time to get started in the Mavic Mini. And just so you guys know, I do not get any of my products for free from DJI. I'm trying to get on their demo list, but I'm not sure why I haven't been able to get on there. Maybe it's because my reviews are so <laughs> crucially honest that they don't want to give me free stuff. I don't know. But I do buy all my own DJI equipment, drones, everything, cameras. Anyway, opening up the box here, kind of just a flimsy cardboard box, and that's all that's in there. And then we have this same bag that looks just about exactly like the Mavic Air 2 bag. Let me bring that one up here real quick. Yeah, everything is just completely the same from the outside. Kind of wish that the Mavic Air bag had some little pouches on the outside so you could kind of put some extra stuff like the, uh, the Mavic 2 pouch had, like these elastic little things. This doesn't have anything. So if anything, that's something that I do miss. But it looks like in all dimensions, the Mini 2 bag is just about a half an inch to an inch smaller than the Mavic Air 2. Let's get into the bag and see what we got. Of course, you have this strap here. I'm not going to open that up because it's just a shoulder strap. Same kind of uh, really waterproof, weatherproof type of zipper with the, the waterproof uh, rubber there. Here's initially what we got. We have the same controller as the Mavic Air 2. Interesting, huh? This is going to be all your batteries, looks like, and your multi-charger. Got another little guy here. This looks like the all of the manual and instruction booklet. And then last but not least, there it is, the Mavic. Well, not the Mavic, right? Just the Mini 2. Nothing else in there. A little silica pack in the bottom. And the very top has that same kind of zipper that the Mavic Air 2 had. By the way, guys, if you did want to see my full series on the Mavic Air 2 and the Mavic Mini, go ahead and check up here. I'll have had those, both of those series videos pop up here. And also have them down in the description down below below as well as all the products I review and also uh, a lot of the products I use to film my videos is in there as well. Interesting, we got all these little baggies here. There's extra sticks for the controller, set of propellers. Looks like they're going away from that kind of really soft baggie. It looks like there's just a little Phillips screwdriver in here. And uh, that used to be what they would package all their stuff in, but now they're using this clear plastic stuff. Screws and propellers. So here is another. Each bag has a set of two, so you have to have both bags, and that completes a whole set of four. So they're giving you a full set of four, and then one extra set as well. So we get a set and a half of extra propellers because as you can see, the propellers are already on the drone here. That orange accent is kind of neat, kind of different. Okay, getting into the accessories box. Let's see what we have. Two batteries, looks like there is one already installed in the Mini 2. So we've got the multi-charger and two batteries, cables to attach your phone, one uh, USB Type-C that plugs into the controller, and this is a micro USB here. Then we have one that is just dual USB Type-C. We'll just open this up just in case you guys wanted to see this if it's not too dang white. Whoa. So quick start guide, customer service, we are here for you. Two-way charging hub instructions and disclaimer and safety guidelines. Let's get into the batteries and charging hub. Very similar to the other charging hubs. Looks like the batteries are overall very similar. Maybe a little bit of a different form factor. Interesting. Here is the mini one. Uh, charging hub you can see how it is different color those batteries are rounded 
these batteries are a little bit more square so do have a kind of similar type of button up here the battery in the original mini actually feels heavier the mini 2 has a 2250 at 8.8 .8 volts and the mini 1 is a 2450 at 8.4 volts man so we're having more features and more flight time with a lighter and smaller battery pretty amazing so they must be getting really good with their energy efficient efficiency on their drones and their programming so anyway there it is the multi-charger it can charge three batteries Let's see what kind of ports we have over here so there is our usb type c just a little quick power tap and they're not going to show up as far as power goes until we charge them up for the first time what's cool about these little multi-chargers even on the uh, mini one you can see that there how it has a regular standard usb type a port and that's in case you want to use this thing as a power hub if you had to sacrifice like one of your batteries and charge your phone you can go ahead and use this to charge other usb devices so a pretty cool option okay guys let's inspect the controller and then we're going to get to the mini open this bag up and see what the differences are first of all just a quick comparison with the mavic mini one controller you can see how it's a drastic change in the form factor how large it is this one is more comfortable in the hands i'll give you that but it is a definitely a larger and more bulky controller so i know that the mavic air 2 controller you could not put like something like the ipad mini in here because it is just too small it just will not fit that's totally extended and that's not fitting in there so you're gonna have to get some type of bracket which fits the ipad mini but then the ipad mini is covering the actual transmission antenna and the antennas in this controller are up here one thing i wish they really would have done i don't know why they didn't do that is make this bracket extend at least to fit an ipad mini it is uh, very tight but you can mount your ipad mini look at this in the old mini generation one controller it is on the bottom of the controller of course but at least you could mount that and the antennas were not obstructed in any way by your ipad that's a big negative for me i really wish they could have just extended this bracket on top that would have been so awesome if you could just put your your mini up in there without any specialty brackets a couple of differences the naming is different on the center button left side the mini 2 they're calling cine mode so cinematic and on the left side on the air 2 it was just tripod mode the home button that's the only other difference i'm seeing on the front the home button on the mini 2 has a home icon as well as a pause icon so when you're doing maybe some of those quick shots you can just hit this button it'll pause where it is hit it again and it'll resume maybe a orbit or whatever you're trying to do top is exactly the same no differences there and there's the bottom so exactly the same in every way except for these two uh, button labels finally have the controller out of the way and everything else guys let's get into it here it is the mini 2 what everybody's been waiting for guys the mini 2 is actually a few grams lighter than the mini 1 so they're doing a phenomenal job at trimming weight in areas and then adding the weight where you know these improvements are which is going to be the camera and of course the OcuSync technology but look at this thing here we go so noticeable difference right off the bat the uh, propellers have little tips colored tips on them and what's really striking is look at this so it's a little wraparound uh, case guard so that's really a very welcome improvement to have this little propeller guard clip that just holds everything together so the first thing i'm noticing is there's this little looks like a led light right here uh, i know some people said that this was possibly they were going to try to put forward sensors in there i don't believe so i don't think this is the right shape for any kind of forward obstacle sensors if they're going to do that they would probably put them in these little eye looking holes this is now a real vent in the mini one look at that it's just a cosmetic fake plastic vent there is no airflow going there this is the mini one here in the mini two we have an actual functional vent where it's going to let air in here probably due to that ocusync hardware in there because it gets hotter please remove the gimbal protector before taking off of course and this is just this little shipping sticker we can remove please use the propeller holder that's what they're calling it to protect the propellers when storing there you go 
so it shows you what to do it also protects the rear propellers the rear propellers are kind of uh latched up with just this paper right now but it looks like they go in here when you undo this so that's pretty awesome so we can reference this sticker again if we need to and see what other stickers we can take off whoa well there goes the gimbal protector that just kind of fell off well we have that off let's just take these little things off it looks like some of the sticky has kind of come off from just shipping and sitting there so these are just little protecting things that you want to take off make sure you take all these off otherwise your gimbal and camera won't work right check that thing out guys that's a 4k looks almost exactly same as the mini one we're going to compare it more in depth in just a second here i just want to get this thing all unwrapped and all the stickers off and stuff so let's take off this little guy a little cardboard sticker for the rear, rear propellers and there's another rear sticker here on the battery this one's saying charge to activate the battery before the first time use so you're not going to have any power with any of those batteries we get three in this kit and none of them are going to power up or even show any power until you plug them in and charge them all so make sure you do that first shows you just kind of how to open it and push the battery tab to release it we'll go through that real quick i just want to get this plastic off this sticker USB-C type of port and there's your micro SD card port for storing onboard video a little light here and wow that's a button so a little different than the mini one there was also a light here as well but that doesn't push in this one actually clicks in okay so there's really no other stickers I can take off right now let's just go through the how to remove the battery so you pop that up and then same type of deal so you're just pinching and then pulling out you can see how that battery slides in and out there's the internals of the mini definitely more compact up there with that OcuSync technology and a little bit more onboard processing for the 4k camera but very simple just sliding in just like the mini one and clicking in and then shutting your door so let's take off this propeller strap so just a little clicker there ball indention that pops in the hole to clip this on i thought it would be maybe a magnet but it's just like a physical hole clip and there we go mini 2 this is kind of like a soft plastic a little bit harder of a silicone here as for the same thing with the entire guard so this is like a flexible not too soft kind of silicone it's kind of like a soft plastic feel or a harder silicone these propellers just really are super loose they swing around so that's really awesome that they uh, put that guard on there for us well we have the bottom shown here let's compare it to the mini one it looks exactly the same again like i was saying this is a push button though the uh, cooling ports on the bottom look exactly the same that is real cooling ports all the power button and everything looks exactly the same oh, i almost forgot another difference we can see here is on the mini one that's a micro usb port there and this one has the uh, usb c port on the mini 2 camera on the mini 2 on the right and the mini 1 on the left they really do look exactly the same the mini 2 just basically says 4k on it and that is really the only difference i can see getting into how our camera works of course gimbals they all kind of work the same these 3d gimbals so you have your yaw stability here axis with the motor up top then you have your pitch up and down that's going to be using these side motors to make sure that stays level. And then you have your roll here, so it can stabilize the roll access. And that's just by one motor in the back there. Pretty amazing uh, little small gimbal that DJ has developed and they're keeping it so light for these small little guys. Okay, only other stickers we have is you want to, it's telling us to unfold the front arms first and the rear arms second so here's how you open this thing up front first and then the rears just come down and out like that there's our ultralight 240 gra 49 gram statement there on the side and this one actually comes in when you weigh it at just around 242 grams so it is a bit lighter than the mini one as i was saying it's not too hard to figure out after doing it a couple times how to unfold these so i'd recommend just taking these stickers off might as well you know save a little bit a tiny bit of weight and also some drag air drag so definitely take these guys off check out the bottom of the rear arms where the motor mounts up they put a little like a foam covering here on the mini two mini one at least on mine they had uh, zero foam covering 
under there. So a little bit more fit and finish there. And the back of the arms, it looks a little more fit and finished. Yeah, that's actually plastic now. This is actually the same kind of hard plastic as the rest of the body on the Mini 2. The Mini 1 here, they just put a little bit of that same foam in here. This is actual foam. These arms I noticed in my unboxing of the Mini 1 is they're super flexible. You see how that flexes? Whereas now in the Mini 2, since we have that hard plastic there, not barely flexing at all. This, this part is flexing more than the arm. That is a big improvement. So they're making these little minute improvements just like DJI always does and it looks like it's working really well. I wanted to try to put the Mini 2's uh, gimbal cover back on because remember it fell off right when we took off that plastic. Just wanna make sure there's not a problem here. Yeah, it seems okay. I think it probably just got like dislodged in shipping and was just sitting barely on and that sticker was holding it on. But it does look like it snaps in there and that's on there solid, that's not gonna come off. And I wanna just try to see how easy it is to uh, put this little propeller guard back on. Here we go, so we have the mini like this, going to put it on there. Propellers just go right in these two little side slots. Turn it around and I guess you just wanna have the propellers right in there underneath this little latch and then just push it in, lock it, and there you go. So you can push them up if you want, make it a little tighter. I wouldn't push them too hard just so you don't like warp these things or anything. But look at that, that's how they go. Looks like they will kind of uh, fall out eventually, so be careful of that. Maybe do push them in a little bit. They're not going to go too far, so I guess it's not a big deal. But it looks like they could have done a little bit better engineering on this. Maybe put like a little notch right in the top underneath so the propellers would hit that and not be able to come out of this band. You really aren't gonna get any differences aside from maybe a millimeter, I would think, in any direction. Until we swap out the Mini 1 with the Mavic Air 2, that's a huge difference. So let's just check this out real quick. There we go. So <laughs> if you're looking at buying the Mavic Air 2, just keep in mind it's, it's a drone that's almost twice as big. It's also more than twice as heavy. Basically the same flight time, it's gonna have about the same distance control range because now they have the same OcuSync. So remember, this one's gonna give you all that tracking, infinite tracking. This one only does those little quick shots. It can't really track you anywhere you go. So this will have all that higher processing technology. Definitely gonna have a bit of a better camera. The camera is larger, larger sensor. Then of course, this one has uh, all of the front and rear obstacle avoidance. No side on this, but at least it has obstacle avoidance where the Mini has zero obstacle avoidance whatsoever. Only thing it's seeing is on the ground for landing. It can kind of see the ground through these sensors here. Anyway, I really think we've gone through everything super in depth so far with the Mini 2. I'm going to put my phone up here on the controller. I'm going to show you the interface and let's just see if it's changed at all from the initial mini offering maybe go through an update this thing probably has an update to go through so we'll do that as well on the phone show you how all that works okay guys so expect it realistically to take about 45 minutes to charge all this stuff now the problem with this setup is you don't get two charge plugs and two usb cables so obviously you're only going to be able to charge either the multi-charger with the included setup in the box or the controller unless you have another USB type C cable and also a way to charge it in a three amp outlet. You can do a lower amperage outlet if you wanted to, but it will take longer for it to charge. Effectively, it takes 45 minutes to charge one battery out of the box and also 45 minutes to charge the controller. A little bit of a con again, it's like it's like DJI, they, they improve some things, but then they still are behind on the curve on some of the obvious things that people are gonna need to do. You're gonna wanna charge your controller and your batteries at the same time when you first get your drone. So what's up DJI, come on man. You'd think after being around so long, they would work out these issues. Some kind of deal where you can plug in and charge your controller at the same time you charge your batteries. You would think they would have taken care of that by now. And by the way, guys, these are lithium polymer bag batteries. These are not lithium ion cylindrical cells. And so they're really having a high density pack of lithium polymer batteries in here now. Remember the Mini 1? They 
uh, went with a cylindrical lithium ion hard casing batteries. And so that, that's kind of where they're probably saving most of their weight in these batteries. So something really good to know. Battery technology is getting better and DJI seems to be right up there at the top with packing their batteries with the highest density and lowest weight type of batteries for especially for flight all right the mini's ready to go we need to get the controller going so first thing you need to put these sticks on right so you have some type of controllability so we need to take these sticks out put them on just like this really simple to pull them out of those little just rubber encasements on the bottom there you go there's your control sticks pop this bracket up and then the one side that is loose is the left side of this cable so we need to pull it out it's got a big enough uh, bracket to fit any type of phone it just will not fit uh, any type of tablet so remember that so we're just pushing in the top letting the bottom kind of just drop in to the notches and we're ready to connect our cable after we power up so with all dji drones you need to press press and hold that controller is ready to go. Then we need to grab the drone here and do the same thing on the drone. The power is right on the bottom, so quick press, for then let go and press and hold. Just wanna let it boot up until, there we go, so the controller lights are on solid. So that's our lightning connector iPhone cable. So I need to remove this and put in the uh, USB-C type of cable. So all we're doing in this instance is grabbing the cable that's inside of the controller. You can see that is the connector on this side, there's just an open hole on that side to kind of park the other side of the cable. So just quickly going into the bag and grabbing the cable, guys, that has the two uh, USB-C connectors for my Android phone, and doing the same thing, just plugging in one side into where the plug goes, right in there, and then we have the other side dangling here, and this is the side, of course, that we're gonna plug in to the bottom of our phone. And let's see what happens. I felt the vibration pop up on the screen and it's asking us what we want to launch. So I'm gonna pick DJI Fly app and let's see what happens here. Okay, there we go. So we got a video start to play of course. Go through the disclaimer, make sure you agree and hit agree there. And it basically already has my binding account because I have other DJI drones with the same phone. So we'll go ahead and activate it here under the same email. Aircraft activated, that was really easy. So pressing done. So if you didn't have previous DJI drone guys and an account in the app, you're gonna have to go through an account registration and setup just to let you know. So if you wanted to get this DJI Carry Fresh, uh, it is recommended if you're maybe a beginner and you don't really know quite how to fly a drone perfectly yet. Maybe a good idea to get this DJI Carry Refresh because for a pretty low yearly cost, I think it's only around 40 or $50, it allows you two replacements, express replacement, water damage coverage, and free two-day shipping. So you'll get a replacement drone right away, although you're going to need to send them in your original drone. So like if it flies away and you lose it, it may be hard to use this. So just make sure you can possibly retrieve your drone. I know that's gonna be hard sometimes, like if you're flying over water and you run out of battery and you crash, how the heck are you gonna find that thing? So it's up to you if you wanna do this DJI Carry Fresh. It will help you if you can recover the drone, but it may not if you can't recover the drone that has some problems. They're kinda of like corralling you into buying this. It's kind of frustrating. I'm gonna hit cancel. Like how the heck do I get out of here? If I press X, they want you to go to the DJI Carry Fresh site. If you press confirm, all I can do is hit more and that takes you to buying DJI Carry Fresh as well. So it's like you have to go uh, press the back button on your phone. There we go. So of course I have slide to go back. So it just plays this little screen of you know videos supposedly they have taken with this drone. Who knows actually what drone they're taking it with. You can skip it up here on the top right. There's a firmware update. So this will be a good little tutorial, guys, on how to run through an initial firmware update. So this phone is connected to my home Wi-Fi. If you see that pop up there, whether you're out in the field, of course, you can upgrade if you're out in the field on some kind of data connection. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, do the update here 
on my home Wi-Fi. It's saying new DJI RC N1 firmware available and it's just about half a megabyte. So I'm gonna hit install here. It looks like it's installing the controller firmware because that's blinking now. So we'll just go through this, see how long it takes. Looks like it's only gonna take a couple of minutes. Okay, so the controller just rebooted and let's see what we're doing on the screen. We're at 90% done. Okay, that was pretty quick. That was just about one minute it took to do that. Always open the Fly app when connected, okay. DJI Fly, always. I have a few other apps that it's getting confused on what to open up, so we'll just always make it open. Designate the first charged battery, just to do all these updates, because as you can see, there's a actual Mini 2 firmware update available, and that's gonna be 50 megabytes. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this. Let's see how long this takes to install. I'll be running through, popping in periodically just to know, let you know how it's going. It's 53% right now. You can hit more and you can see exactly what it's doing. Zoom to video mode, that's great. Adding some zoom features, cool. All kinds of stuff. So you can read down this list if you want. I'm not gonna go through everything, but it looks like there are some pretty good improvements, which DJI usually does, uh, you know, when they first release a product, they're usually updating frequently. Optimized logic of low battery RTH. That's always nice in say a, a range test, right? Lots of updates here. I'd recommend going ahead and doing it if you have the time, if you're out trying to fly. You might not want to do this because it does take some battery power and some time. We're already at 75%. It's going pretty quick now. The drone in the background just rebooted. Just saw it reboot and heard it reboot there. It stalls a little bit when the drone reboots. It has to reconnect and then start keep installing. You see how it kind of stopped at 76%. Now it's 77, 78. Wow, rebooting one more time. Yeah, it looked like the gimbal did kind of rotate a little bit. So that was two reboots on the drone, five to 10 seconds per percent on this last stretch. And there we go, we got a DJI screen. The controller was blinking for a second. There it goes, it goes on solid and we're done. DJI firmware installed. So you see that up there? There's no lights going on anymore on the drone. So the drone has completely shut off. Keep in mind, this thing does not have any fans in it, guys. So you're gonna hear no fan in there and it's getting pretty hot. So I'm touching the, especially the sides here on the bottom, very hot. Down here is kind of hot. I would kind of refrain from uh, doing this in a super high temperature area, maybe put a fan on it and run your fan while you're doing these updates. So it does in fact look like we need to turn back on the drone because it just turned itself off. So again, click, then click and hold. And let's let that boot back up. So we're gonna click go fly here and let's see what the interface looks like. Pretty much the same it looks like as the Mini 1 and the Mavic Air 2. Same exact application, so we're gonna have pretty much the same type of interface. We have our percentage up here. It looks like we've got 90% flight time signal. Our satellites are 10 satellites in the house, so that's not bad at all. There is no SD card in there, so you're gonna wanna pop an SD card in the back of the drone. This is a 4K drone, so use a 4K compatible SD card. I'll have that down there in the description down below on what I use and what works great that you can buy. They don't include an SD card, of course, in the package. We're not getting the option to record to onboard storage, so you are going to need to buy a SD card, otherwise you can't even record any pictures or video, apparently. If I click on this no SD card, it gives us a free flight checklist, so we have no other option to store anything. So you won't be recording anything while you're flying if you don't have an SD card in there. Of course, as usual, on the right we have our mode. So that's gonna be picture or you click it and you're in video mode. You can switch back and forth. This button just takes photos. As you can see, uh, there is no possibility for it to store any photos. So it's asking you to put an SD card in there. If we hit this play button, that's just kind of our gallery, everything we have recorded previously. Over on the bottom we have AE lock EV format which is JPEG. It shows us little graphics so there's no SD card in there and this is kind of cool. It's kind of the compass of which way you're facing. See if I turn that and which way the drone is. Of course being this close that's going to be kind of thrown off. You want to kind of wait till you're flying to look at this 
little compass graph. We have our distance and our height. So of course, distance is kind of skewed right now. It's definitely not nine and a half feet away from me it's sitting right there on the table. So this is going to come into play when you start to fly. This is going to be your maps button right here. So if you press it, you hit it again, and that's going to bring you into the main map. And this is a pretty cool screen if you wanted to use this while you're flying. You can see the restricted zones. And then over here on the bottom right, we have Find My Drone. So that's really good to use if you click on it. It actually leads you to where your drone, say you crash landed or you ran out of battery and you had to land. It actually opens up a Google map and it routes you to where your drone was last known. We have these options over here on the right. We've got Info. And that tells you what you're seeing as far as the restricted zones on the map. Main thing is this bottom one down here, and this is where you're going to change it from standard map to satellite to mixed. So the mix is going to give you labels on the map so you can see where you are. Of course, I'm here on Maui and where exactly your drone is and where your home point is. So pretty cool. Same type of map deal. Looks like it's working really good. Let's click back on the FPV video here. Of course, if you don't wanna have this map over here on the left side as you're flying, this little mini map, you can go ahead and press these two arrows and kind of close that down so that's not distracting you. If you're more into doing manual settings, of course, we're in the camera mode. You can press this little camera icon here and that brings it right into manual. You see how that darkened everything up? ISO from 100 to 3200. See how that brighten that right up. Let's go to the shutter. Let's see what we can do here. One eight thousandth to four seconds. Not four inches, four seconds, right guys? Some of you who've watched my previous videos will get that joke. If you're not a super camera guy, you can just go to automatic and have everything adjust in the camera in the auto settings. Check this out. So remember that update, we had a zoom. So now we can, we should be able to pinch and zoom. Look at that, guys. It's telling us on the right side, this is 2.8. It can go up to four times digital zoom. So what a great little option that they just updated with on the Mini 2. You can do some zooming. Just get a high quality uh, micro SD card. I'll have the link again in the description, guys. But the way this goes in is there is your card slot. You don't have to have the drone off if you don't want to. Of course, always recommended to have it off, but apparently you don't have to. It works okay, just stick it in the slot use your fingernail and click that thing in there so it's not coming out and you're ready to go and take some pictures and videos that are saved on the drone. So I'm gonna click over here on the top right, see these three little dots? And that'll get us into all this stuff. Max distance, you can put all the way up to no limit. And then max altitude, you can go all the way up to 1,640 feet and all the way down to 49 feet if you wanted to. So those are the max options there. Calibrate your compass. I'd recommend to still calibrate it when you're just about to fly in an open flying field where you have no metal and electronics around. So make sure you do that. Click on your battery info. Pretty cool. These are smart batteries. So you have all that information at your fingertips on how your batteries are doing. Going over to control, that was in the safety we had there. You can change between metric and imperial. I'm in the US, so I like my imperial, but you guys over in the UK or wherever you are that use metric, you do have the option to do that. Front LED mode, oh cool, you can change the colors. This might be one of the drop mechanism options for one of those guys. You can, you can disable it have a rainbow breathing or have it on solid. Let's see if we change that color. Say I wanted to change it to my favorite color, which is blue. Yeah, check that out. So now that is a blue kind of breathing LED light. So that's kind of neat. Advanced gimbal settings, you see there, so you can adjust your speed. It looks like, wow, yeah, you can really uh, adjust all this stuff. Just be careful adjusting all this stuff. Uh, if you do mess it up, you can hit reset here and that resets all of your settings. So on each mode, sport mode, you can also adjust all your settings, that's pretty cool. And also Cine Smooth, you can adjust all of your settings as well. I don't remember seeing this in the mini, so looks like we might be getting some upgrades here. Stick modes, if you guys were wondering, you know, I always go through this, but you have mode one, mode two, mode three. I like to use mode two. Or you can customize what your controls do, so that's great. And this is pretty cool, so the function button, just like the Mavic Air 2, here's the function button right here on the left, that used to turn off and on. Bottom light on the Mavic Air 2. You have control of this now, defaulting at reset gimbal. See how I can't scroll up and down 
all you can do is recenter the gimbal with that button anyway so maybe with some updates we'll have some other functions on that and of course you can also do flight tutorials so if you guys were new so I'd recommend doing that if you're a first time flyer of DJI drones go ahead and go through this let's go to camera all kinds of stuff anti-flicker video subtitles um, hmm don't want to put that on I don't want that to be in my video so i'm going to turn that off storage uh there we go i just put a 32 gig storage card in there and it's telling me how much storage i have moving on to transmission here we go remember guys this is ocusync so this is using the best type of dji transmission technology for video and signal it should be kind of a real-time type of spread spectrum technology where it's choosing on the fly a better channel while you're even flying and having it on so you don't get that interference. All my flight tests I do, my long range flight tests and all that stuff, I'm always leaving it on dual band and auto in all of my drone tests. I never change this and it seems to work out pretty well for me. And then of course we're going to about, verify our firmware. Going back on these screens, all it entitles is clicking off the screen and kind of in the blank area and that takes the whole screen away. Always like to test this on everything I do, just so you guys can see what the latency is in real time. So that's pretty average for DJI. You can see me on the left moving my hand and then you can see what's showing up in the video. Uh, it's only like a, about 200 milliseconds, I'd say, of lag time, which is pretty normal for the OcuSync technology. Remember in the Mavic Air 2, we could move left and right with the gimbal. Let me see if I can do that by just putting my finger down and then moving right and left. No, so we can't do that. All we can do is go up and down with the gimbal. See that how we can go up and down? We could kind of do left and right with the Mavic Air 2, but not the uh, Mini 2 or the Mini. So there you go, for those of you who are, who are wondering that. Anyway guys, I think we went through everything you really need to know when you're unboxing your Mini 2, when you're setting it up, you're updating it, on-screen controls uh, are all about, and all the settings. And I hope that was informative to you. Of course, we are doing a full series on this, so don't miss my series it'll be down in the description down here and also i'll have the link pop up here if you guys wanted to see the flight tests and do some range testing also i always like to do see what kind of cinematic video we can do for you know semi-professional amateur type of video make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the rest of this series i'm looking at having some fun with this guy we're also going to probably do some other testing since it has this light in the front you can see that pulsing there we can change the color that's pretty cool probably going to be able to use that for some kind of drop mechanism since we can turn that off in the settings so a light sensor like i did in my previous video of testing the mavic air 2 and also the mavic 2 pro drop mechanisms I also have all the products i use in my videos as well as my filming equipment down there down below in the description so you can check that out and get your own mini too if you are happy with the way this thing works so far it looks pretty good there was a couple of uh, little cons as i stated in the video but very minor stuff that can be overlooked but dji has been around for a while so you think that they would incorporate a few of those things in their drones that are pretty much targeted for new flyers so hopefully they can work on those couple of things and that's what you're going to get from my reviews guys is the pros and the cons no matter what they are i just kind of tell it like it is tell the truth always tell the truth you know you don't want to mislead anybody you want to make sure they know the ins and outs of how it actually works anyway guys i hope you liked the video if you did give it a thumbs up if you don't that's okay too give it a thumbs down but of course you're going to hurt my feelings and i'll see you in the next one thanks for watching and let's go fly this thing in the next video.